Hello to all fans of physics, astronomy, mathematics and the exact sciences in general. This is Andrei Shchetnikov with you and today I want to discuss several related phenomena. The first will be the phenomenon of losing a day or, conversely, gaining an extra day when crossing the international dateline. And our story begins with the first circumnavigation by Ferdinand Magellan's expedition, when his companions, having sailed around the Earth, returned home to Spain almost three years later. It turned out that, according to their calculations, the day of their return should have been September 5th, 1522. But on shore they were told that it was not the 5th, but already the 6th of September. Somewhere along the way they had lost a day. At first people were puzzled, and only later did they understand what had happened. If I travel west, moving away from the rising sun, my speed will be subtracted from the Earth's rotation speed. Because of this, my solar days will stretch out a bit, becoming longer. And when I circle the Earth and return to my starting point, the number of these lengthened days during my journey will be fewer than the regular days experienced by someone who stayed in one place. But if I travel eastward, moving toward the rising sun, my speed will significantly add to the Earth's rotational speed, and consequently, my solar days will become noticeably shorter. And when I circle the Earth and return to my original point, the number of these shortened days I experience will be fewer than those experienced by the observer who stayed in one place. So, during a comprehensive round-the-world journey to the West, you will inevitably lose one full day, just as Ferdinand Magellan's intrepid crew famously did, while conversely, traveling eastward across the globe actually adds an extra day to your calendar. This fascinating phenomenon can also be expressed in another way, perhaps more simply. During a round-the-world journey, the Earth makes a certain number of rotations on its axis. And the traveler, if he moves in the same direction to the east, adds one more rotation. But if he moves in the opposite direction to the west, he subtracts one rotation from these rotations. That's why he ends up with either one day more or one day less. Now imagine that right now, here in Novosibirsk, it is midnight. In Yekaterinburg, which is to the west of us, it is now 10 o'clock in the evening. In Moscow, it's 8 o'clock in the evening. And in New York, 12 hours away from here, it is noon of the previous day. Now let's go east. In Irkutsk it is now 2 o'clock in the morning, and in Chukotka, in Anadir, it is 5 o'clock in the morning. If we continue our reasoning eastward all the way to New York, it will already be noon of the next day there. So, which noon? Is it in New York? Yesterday's or tomorrow's? And to prevent such paradoxes from happening, people agreed to establish the international date line, which separates yesterday from tomorrow. This line is formally drawn in the Pacific Ocean along the 180th meridian, but for convenience it is shifted to one side or the other. When crossing the international date line from east to west, a ship or airplane enters the next day. And by crossing this line from west to east, you can end up in yesterday and live through it once more. We've talked about the international date line, and now let's move on to kinematics. And for that, I'll need these two gears, which we have left over from one of our previous experiments. The large gear has 48 teeth, while the small gear has 12 teeth, which is four times fewer. And now I'll ask a classic question. If you move the small gear around the large one so that it returns exactly to the same spot, how many times will it rotate around its own axis? And you might say that there will be four rotations, because 48 is four times greater than 12. But don't be so quick to give that answer. I replaced the small gear with a large one. Now both gears are the same size. Well, we can do an experiment. We carefully move one gear smoothly around the other. And here, after making half a turn around, the gear has made a full rotation. Watch further. One, another rotation. Keep an eye on these holes. That's already half a turn. A full rotation. Another half turn, and now that's two full rotations. And it's clear why this happens. Uh, the wheel makes one rotation as it travels the length of its own circumference. And the second rotation happens because the path the wheel rolls on is itself closed in a loop. So then, it's clear what will happen with the smaller gear. After traveling this distance, it will make four rotations, and a fifth rotation will appear due to the road being closed in a loop. 
Now let's check with the smaller gear, keeping an eye on the arrow. One rotation, two rotations, three rotations, four rotations. And now five rotations and we're back where we started. And by the way, there's a great video on this topic by Derek Muller on the Veritasium channel. I highly recommend you watch it. And now, before I ask the final question, I want to thank everyone who supports our channel. How to do this is written below in the video description. Now, here's a truly intriguing question. We all know that a year contains approximately 365 and a quarter days. And I want to ask, during this entire period of time, how many times does our planet Earth rotate around its own axis? Share your insightful thoughts on this fascinating topic in the comments section to this video on YouTube.